Welcome to today's edition of the Author's Corner, brought to you by KNEO 91.7 FM, The Word. I'm Roberta Foster, and today I welcome Grace Wabuki Klein to Author's Corner. She has written the book Flourish, Finding Purpose in the Unknown and Unexpected Seasons of Life, which is published by Worthy Publishing, and she'll tell you more about how to find the book at the end of the program. And Grace, thank you so much for being with us today. Today. Thank you, Roberta. I'm delighted to be with you. Tell us a little bit about your book and why you wrote it. Well, my book is about finding purpose in whatever season of life you're in, whether it's the ones filled with joy or the difficult ones that are filled with heartache and pain. Okay. Uh, I believe that what Jesus said is that he came that we might have life and life abundantly. And so often when we go through things in life, sometimes there is a tendency to either go into a cave of depression or put life on hold. But I truly believe the Lord wants us to flourish and live our lives with purpose. So I wanted to provide some encouragement, some practical tools and principles of what we can do to walk with purpose, our God-given purpose, no matter what season of life we're in. You know, we all as an entire world went through an unknown and unexpected Mm -hmm. season just a few years ago. And so the question is not if, but when um, we go through something, hopefully not of that magnitude, but just living life. There's so many things that come up and they're like, I didn't see that coming. Mm -hmm. or I didn't think that trial was going to last that long. So how do we continue to live our life in those um, seasons? And I will say I I chose the name seasons uh, because um, originally being from California and now living in Birmingham, Alabama, I was struck by how, you know, the changing seasons and Uh. trees um, continue to stand no matter what season they're going through, whether it's the storms or the wind or the rain. And so just real quickly, the book is broken up into four main seasons Uh um, and uh, fall being one of letting go, um, letting go of things in your head, your heart and your hands that might be keeping you stuck because leaves on trees, they're intentionally, the trees intentionally let go of their leaves. A lot Mm -hmm. of people think it's the wind that blows them off, but trees are intentional because they would actually die if they kept the leaves on throughout Mm. the winter season. I I talk more about that in the book, but Winter is about the trials and storms of life that we go through and how do we keep our faith when the struggle is real Mm -hmm. um, through the loss, the waiting, and the struggle. Spring is about being open to what God has for you because so often it doesn't look like what we are praying for or what we prayed for. Um, And then summer is a time of celebration and reflection and thanking God for what he did and um, learning, you know, what we learned along the way. So that's an overview of the book. And I really wrote it because people started to hear my story and asked, Grace, how did you keep your your faith when the struggle Mm -hmm. is real? And what resources do you have? So it wasn't something that I set out, oh, I've got to be an author. (laughs) (laughs) I gave the Lord more reasons than Moses as to why I was not (laughs) the one to write a book. Um, But I thought, you know, my answer has always been, yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do you have my life and mm. if there's anything that I can do to help people and encourage them to draw closer to you then I'll do it so that's in a nutshell what the book is about and why I wrote it okay so you started out with describing the fall season so why did you start with fall I thought it would make sense to start with fall because in order for us to to be open to what God wants to do in our lives, so often we need to let go of some things that might be in the way. Um, Sometimes it's the way that we're thinking um, that holds us back, um, whether it's I'm not good enough or I'm never going to amount to anything, I don't come from the right family, don't have enough at the contacts or finances. Those ways of thinking can prevent us from flourishing and um, living with purpose. And so I wanted to address those things first so that we can have a clear plate to build on. And so, you know, whether it's the things in our head or our heart, often those um, things can really keep us stuck. Things like unforgiveness, we're holding on to Mm -hmm. something that was done to us Mm -hmm. so long ago. Um, And 
And so I wanted to be able to have a clean slate that we can build on. And in order to do that, we had to kind of work through, through some things. Yeah, <laughs> I, told, right. I told the readers, just hang with me for a little bit. You know, I know we're starting a little intense, but it's going to be worth it. You know, um, just like when you go to the doctor and you have to have a procedure done, you know, it's, it's not fun at first and the, the things that you have to go through, but in the end, it's going to allow healing and growth. And so we, we start with a surgery of the, the heart, the heart Very thing. Good. Very good. Well, you have a personal testimony of something that you prayed for for uh, many years. And uh, as I understand it, the Lord waited until you were 42 to answer that prayer. So why don't you tell us about that? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my goodness. So for many, many years, my prayer to the Lord was for him to bring my husband. I wanted to be married. And um, it was such a challenge, especially I was serving in full time ministry. And so you're always doing, you know, baby showers, bridal showers, weddings and all that. And I kept praying, Lord, when are you bringing the man that you have for me? You know, I've been the bride made way too many times <laughs> but um, he, he didn't answer that until I was 42 um, my husband came to work with the church that I was um, on staff at and um, I asked the Lord you know uh, for so many years why is it taking so long it wasn't until after we got married and I had asked the Lord why do some people wait two years and I waited two decades <laughs> and finally the Lord answered and he said Grace do you want a faith that is two years deep or two decades mm. deep. And uh, that's when I got it, Roberta, that there are some things that can only be developed in us through the waiting, through the mm -hmm. struggle, through the heartache, through, that the Lord is developing us to be more like Him, drawing us closer to Him. I can tell you now that my faith is strong. You need to believe for something, I'm your girl <laughs> to join you in faith. And I just want to encourage anybody who may be listening, who's crying out to God for an answer to prayer. Maybe you have a son or daughter who doesn't want anything to do with the Lord, or you're believing for a healing or a financial breakthrough, whatever it may be, I just want to encourage you that the Lord sees you. He has not forgotten you, and mm -hmm. He hears the cry of your heart. Just like photosynthesis, we don't see it with our natural eyes, but we see the effects of it. So I just want to encourage you that the Lord is working. You may not see it, but you will eventually see the effects of what He is doing in your life. And I can testify that um, at age 42, my husband was my first boyfriend and first kiss. And I tell people it's not because there weren't guys interested in me, but because I truly believe God brings two people together for kingdom purpose. Mm -hmm. And I was determined not to settle. And so not saying it was easy. It was definitely very lonely at times. Mm -hmm. But I will testify to anybody listening that it was worth the wait to wait on God and do things His yes. way. So whatever you may be facing right now that may be so overwhelming, so um, frustrating or just disheartening, I want to just encourage you to wait on God. You can trust Him. He will never leave you or forsake you. He is with you and He is working um, in, on your behalf. Amen. Well, today I'm talking with Grace Wabuki Klein regarding her book, Flourish, Finding Purpose in the Unknown and Unexpected Seasons of Life. It's published by Worthy Publishing, and you're listening to Author's Corner. I'm Roberta Foster. Well, you've provided such great encouragement already. Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, chapters that you've written in the book. Um, one of them is actually in the winter season, and I just opened it up, and the thing that I found very interesting in chapter four is you would write about flourishing physically, flourishing spiritually, and flourishing in other ways. And then the next paragraph was, your turn. <laughs> I thought, I thought that was was very catchy. Um, so tell us about the your turn paragraphs in your book. Right. So okay. So the winter season is like I said, the the time of the struggle and the pain. It's the time of loss, loss of a loved one, uh, loss of a dream. Um, could be a miscarriage. It's also a time of waiting, waiting to get married, to have a family, get healing. 
um, and then also the struggles that we go through in life. And so one of the things that the Lord just really challenged me about was to put my journal entries on the, in this book. And I'll mention that before I get to the your turn part, because the journal entries are something that I really wrestled with the Lord about. Mm. I did not want to put my um, <laughs> journals in there for everybody to read because I pour out my heart to the Lord. I've been journaling since I was in junior high, and I've, I've, I've seen the value of that because you're able to go back and see what the Lord has done. Mm-hmm. But I pour out my heart. And so I've always said, if anything ever happens to me, you can take whatever you want, but you've got to burn the journal <laughs> because if people read them, oh my gosh. But so the Lord really challenged me and said, Grace, I want you to put them in there because I want you to see that you understand where people mm-hmm. are at in their heartache and pain. Um, and so you can um, relate and they can resonate with that. However, um, we don't want to leave them there. So, yes, I get the pain and the frustration and the anger and the hurt. But my goal is to help you walk through that um, together. We walk closer to Jesus and become more like him. So the point of putting your turn in there is I bared my whole heart <laughs> and so in writing this, right? And now it's your turn to also take some steps uh, and not just read what Grace did and said, oh, that's good for her, but we're in this together, you know? And so my goal is that together we will grow and become more like Jesus and walk with purpose and flourish. So that's mm. why I put your turn in there. So that's really practical. Like I want to see life change in um, in people's lives as they read this book, that they're not the same as they were when they first started it, but we've gone on, on a growth journey together. So that's, that's why I put that in there. All right. Well, in just a moment, I thing that I found kind of interesting in that is you wrote that in whatever you're facing today, I encourage you to intentionally seek out testimonies from people who have walked through a similar yes. season. Share a little bit more yes. about that with us as we uh, draw yes. t- towards the end of our conversation. Yes. You know, the Word of God says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the Word of our testimonies. And I think people um, kind of under underestimate the power of testimony, mm-hmm. the power of talking about what the Lord has done and His faithfulness and His goodness. But when you read the Bible, that's what people did. So many people were talking about, look at what the Lord has done. He brought us mm-hmm. through, and they they had memorials. They set up altars. They put they had stones. They had different things to remember what God has done. And I just feel like if we take the time to intentionally seek out testimony mm-hmm. in the areas that we are struggling in, in the areas that we are trying to believe for a miracle for, it builds our faith because we say, if God did it for them, He can do it for me. So you might have had a, a miscarriage and and you are just so heartbroken and afraid to try again. Well, I would encourage you to seek out the testimony from another sister who may have had a miscarriage or multiple miscarriages and and the Lord has blessed them with a child or maybe somebody who's believing for healing. What I did when I was single and so lonely, I was like, I'm not going to live my life depressed. It's better to be a happy single than an unhappy Mm -hmm. married. And I wanted to live an abundant life that Jesus died on the cross for me to have. And so I intentionally took my friends out to eat. Sometimes it was just the girlfriend, other other times it was a couple themselves. And I said, tell me your story. Tell mm. me how the Lord brought you together. And as I heard that, Roberta, I tell you, it built my faith mm. because some stories I was like, I don't know how God did that. I mean, somebody was living all the way on the other side of the world mm. on a completely different continent. And they, you know, somebody went on a missions trip or a work trip and they met in that small window of time. And I was like, look at God. If he could do it for them, Amen. surely he can do that for me. He is a miracle working God. Yes. And so that's why I think we don't just wait to hear the miracles. No, you know, you, we recognize, okay, I'm not going to let the enemy drag me into a pit of depression. So I'm going to be um, intentional about seeking testimonies. And if you don't know where to find them, I would encourage you to join your local church, 
join a small group and get in community, because that's where you find people who also have testimonies of what God has done in their life. Amen. Well, Grace, tell our listeners how they can find out more about this book and your ministry. Yes. So this book, Flourish, is is available anywhere books are sold. You can find it online, and um, you can find me at Grace Wabuki Klein on Facebook, Instagram, and that's also my website um, address as well, Grace Wabuki Klein. So one more time, the book is Flourish, Finding Purpose in the Unknown and Unexpected Seasons of Life. And we've been talking with Grace Wabuki Klein. And we certainly thank Worthy Publishing for giving us a copy of the book. And Grace, it's been very inspirational and encouraging talking with you. Thank you for your time today. Oh, thank you, Roberta, for the opportunity. It was a delight to be with you today. And so to our listeners, if you've missed any part of today's interview or would just like to hear it again, you can find it now on your favorite podcast platform or through KNEO.org. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. This is Roberta Foster on the Author's Corner. Join us again next time. God's Word Speaks Truth. God's work speaks life, and God's word speaks to us today. Hi, I'm Pastor John Marins of the Granby Christian Church. Each week we explore God's word together on In the Shadow of Your Wings, a radio broadcast on KNEO. Tune in each Saturday at 6.45 p.m. to hear the show. And if you ever miss it, you can always view the archive online at kneo.org. We also have the program available as a podcast as well, so you can listen anytime, anywhere. It's available from Sky High Podcast Network. I invite you to check out the show and learn more about our incredible God and how He cares for you. You can trust Him. You can depend on Him, and you can rest in the shadow of His wings. 